I don't think hell exists. I happen to believe in life after death, but I don't think it's got a thing to do with reward and punishment. Religion is always in the control business. Uh, and that's something people don't really understand. It's, it's in the guilt-producing control business. And if you have heaven as a place where you're rewarded for your goodness and hell as a place where you're punished for your evil, then you sort of have control of the population. And so they create this fiery place, which has quite literally scared the hell out of a lot of people throughout Christian history. Mm -hmm. And it's part of a control tactic. But wait a minute, you're saying that hell, the idea of a place under the earth or somewhere where you're tormented for an eternity, is actually an invention oh, of yes. the church? I think the church fired its furnaces hotter than anybody else. <clears throat> but I think there's a sense in most religious life of, of reward and punishment in some form. Gee. The church doesn't like for people to grow up because you can't control grown-ups. That's why we talk about being born again. When you're born again, you're still a child. The people don't need to be born again. They need to grow up. They need to accept their responsibility for themselves and the world. What do you make of the theology, which uh, is pretty quite prominent these days in America, which is that there is one guaranteed way not to go to hell, and that is to accept Jesus as your personal Savior? Yeah, I grew up in that tradition. Uh, every church I know claims that we are the true church and they have some ultimate authority. We have the infallible Pope, we have the inerrant Bible. The idea that the truth of God can be bound in any human system, by any human creed, by any human book, is almost beyond imagination for me. I mean, God is not a Christian. God is not a Jew or a Muslim or a Hindu or a Buddhist. All of those are human systems which human beings have created to try to help us walk into the mystery of God. I honor my tradition. I walk through my tradition. But I don't believe my tradition defines God. I think it only points me to God. You and I are emerging people, not fallen people. Our problem is not that we are born in sin. Our problem is we do not yet know how to achieve being fully human. The function of the Christ is not to rescue the sinners, but to empower you and to call you to be more deeply and fully human than you've ever realized there was the potential within you to be. Maybe salvation needs to be conveyed in terms of enhancing your humanity rather than rescuing you from it. Life is a startling and wondrous experience. And eventually, I think we're going to discover that God is unfolding through the life of our consciousness and our self-consciousness and is not a parent figure up in the sky. But I believe because I'm related to something that is not bound by time and space that I will share in whatever God's eternity is. Shalom, shalom, koholayim la. Albanawa Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rechachradash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Akim out there on the highways and the byways. Salutations to the hopeful elect. Salutations to you speckled birds, you Israelite foreigners. And Shalom to the Akwav sitting and listening in silence as the scriptures say to do so. Okay, this is your brother, Amoth Ya'ais from Yahawada of the Great Millstone, Northern Virginia. Okay, back at it again. And as you saw from the prior clip, man, the only truthful thing that uh, uh, the, this Edomite said is that uh, uh, Christianity is uh, filled with flies, man. They wanted, it's a stronghold, man. I saw, I saw the, the word religion basically means a stronghold, man. So, you know, without further ado, man, I ain't going to blab on about it. We're just going to make the points that he said and prove him wrong. You know, because uh, with uh, Salakia, uh, like he said, hell uh, was created. That's, that's that's true. I give him that. The, the first 30 seconds he was speaking, he was uh, telling the truth. But after that 30 seconds, it was all total nonsense coming out of his mouth. Well, let's because uh, like he said, uh, the church was created to control you. OK, so let's go to Micah chapter two. Verse one, woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hands, man. And that's all that's all these churches are, man. They're evil, uh, uh, wicked devices, man. 
and they practice this they practice this continually every time you go to church man every single time you go to church man you you're literally being brainwashed to, uh, with with this false doctrine man okay with this false doctrine okay and he also has said something about uh uh, you have to be you have to be uh, born again and then you'll, you'll you'll be a child and you know this and that okay but the most high even though we have to humble ourselves as children okay which is in Matthew chapter 1 uh maybe verse 5 or 6 or something like that uh, where the well, Yahweh shall put the child and said you better humble yourself like this child you should not enter enter into the kingdom roughly matter of fact let's get it so I don't want to butcher it Matthews 18 let's see what Yahweh Shai said All right, this is Matthew chapter 18, reading from verses 3 to 4. And, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven, man. But we, but you know, we, we still have to be men, you know. So what did, uh, what did Paul say in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13? Verse 11, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things, man. So the Most High demands you to be a man in his truth. He demands you to, to walk like a man, present yourself a man, to, a, to be a man, okay? Now let's, um, because there's no such thing as hell, so let's get a few scriptures uh, to debunk that nonsense, that hell doctrine. Uh, let's go to Job, Job chapter three. Uh, I think we're going to start off at verse 13. It's a lot. We're going to start off at verse 13 and we're going to read to 19. Job chapter three, starting off at verse 13. For now, should I have lain still and been quiet? I should have slept. Then had I been at rest. With kings and counselors of the earth, which built desolate places for themselves, or with princes that had gold, who filled their houses with silver, or as in hidden untimely birth, or as in hidden untimely birth, I had not been as infants, which never saw light. There the wicked cease from troubling and there the weary be at rest. There the prisoners rest together. They hear not the voice of oppressed. So like they hear not the voice of the oppressor. The small and the great are there and the servant is free from his master. So everybody's in, in, in heaven, man, whether you evil or, 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 or wicked or, or righteous or good, man. Everybody goes back to the father. Everybody gets rest, man. Everybody goes back to, to, uh, to, to, the, to the heavens, man. Everybody is is in a uh, in the heavens, regardless if you wicked or or, or 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 good, man. Everybody goes back to the Father, man. Let's go. Let's jump back to um. Let's go. Let's go to Second Corinthians real quick. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse eight, and it reads this: We are confident, I say, and willing, rather to be absent from the body. And to be present with the Lord Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Okay? And let's let's let the Bible talk, man. Let me read this one more time. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Now let's jump to Ecclesiastes. What does that mean? What does that mean? Because the spirit don't die, man. The spirit does not die. All right, this is Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7, and it reads this. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. And that's your body, man. Your, your body returns back to the earth and it, it uh, decays into dust. And the spirit shall return unto the most high who gave it. So every spirit, like I said, whether it's wicked or righteous, goes back to the father, man point blank period man okay uh let's uh let's jump back to uh second corinthians real quick second corinthians chapter five again let's read verse 10 
All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we all, so like it, for we must all, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Hamashiach that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. So everybody, when you, when you die, everybody goes to the throne to, to receive judgment. Everybody will see Yahweh, why Yahweh shy, man. Okay, judgment will be brought forth when you when you when you die and your spirit goes back to the spiritual world, to the spiritual realm. You you, you go for judgment. You get your judgment. However long you be there, you, you'll rest and then you'll come back to replay your judgment on the earth, man. Let's let's jump to uh, Ecclesiastes again, because this is light work, man. Ecclesiastes chapter three, and let's start off at verse fifteen and read down to verse sixteen. Ecclesiastes 3, starting off at verse 15. That which have been is now, and that which is to be have already been, and the Most High requireth that which is past. So you out here, you in this body right now, you playing out your judgment. And furthermore, everybody's been here more than once. Okay, so you've been judged more than once. And the Most High, the, the reason why it's so-called uh, overpopulated because it's because everybody's back to uh, play out their judgment. The Most High is requiring that which is past. Verse 16. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment. You hear that? And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment, earth, that wickedness was there. And the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there, man. So you play out your judgment on the earth, man. When you go back to the, to the heavens, to the Father, okay, you get your judgment. You rest for however long the Father wants you to rest. And then he puts you in a new body, man. And you play out your judgment, okay? Let's jump to, uh, let's, let's, let's get another scripture to prove that fact. Let's jump to 2nd Edris, chapter 14, verse 35. Let me get to it, Israel. Be patient with me. All right, Second Ezra, Ezra chapter 14, verse 35, and it reads this. For after death shall the judgment come. So you die. Your, your body goes back into the ground, re returns to the dust. Your spirit goes back to the father that gave it. For after death shall the judgment come when we shall live again. Then shall the names of the righteous be, be manifest and the works of the ungodly be declared. Okay, so like I said, everybody's been been on this earth more than once. Everybody's been judged more than once. And as a matter of fact, you're playing out your judgment right now. Okay, everybody's back for judgment. Point blank period. Now, you know, these wacky tacky Christians think that... Uh, the Most High sent His Son, cause you got if you got to figure, man, these wacky tacky Christians believe in that Trinity uh, nonsense. So they they think that uh, Yahweh Shai, which which they ignorantly call JC, is just uh is just a a power a being. He 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 didn't come in the flesh. He's he's uh not he's not uh so called Jewish as they say and uh, uh uh this and that. But let's let's see what the Scripture says, man. Let's jump to Matthew's. Let's let's see what Yahweh Shai is. According to the scriptures, Matthew chapter one, we're going to get two, man, because that's a whole nother lesson. But I just want to hit a few points. Matthew uh, chapter one, verse 21, and it reads this. And he shall and she shall bring forth Shalakia and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Yahweh for he shall save his people from their sins. OK, so. Who is his people? Who is his people? Let's jump. You know, I wouldn't. This just, this just popped into my head. Let me uh, see real quick. Salakia. Just popped into my head. Yeah, let's go ahead and read this. Acts chapter 5, starting off at verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey the Most High rather than man. The power of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai. Whom ye slew and hanged on a tree, him have the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel, Yasharala, and forgiveness of sins. So he was only sent for Israel, man. So so if 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 if, if his people were Israel, so what tribe was uh 
Yahweh Shai from. Let's get that. Uh, Hebrews chapter 7. We, matter of fact, we're going to get two scriptures on that. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 14. For it is evident our Lord and... Uh, Slaki, I'm, I'm excited. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 14. For it is evident our Lord sprang out of Judah, of, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Now let's jump to Revelation because it's something that Yahweh Shai said at the... At the uh, the, the last book of Revelation, Revelation 22, I believe it's 14, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, now nah, 16, verse 16 right here. Okay, this is Revelation 22, verse 16. I, Yahawashai, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star so he, he he literally said in red letter right here that he's the root and offspring of king david and what was king david king david was a a, a, a judite man from the tribe of yahweh man same tribe i'm from man okay so man come on man please man stop esau you don't know what you're talking about man let's matter of fact let's let's get this man to clarify that the most high is not dwelling with you cave gorillas man psalms you know chapter 50 uh, let's read verses 16 to 19 verses 16 to 19 and it reads this but unto the wicked the most high saith what hast thou to declare my statues or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth seeing thou hatest instruction and castest my words behind thee when thou sawest a thief then thou contendest with him and has been partaker with adulterers. Thou gavest, so like it, thou givest thy mouth to evil. Woo! Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. And that's right, man. Thou, everything that comes out this cave gorilla, this red, thin lipped beast mouth, is evil and deceit, man. Wickedness, man. Mischief, man. This man can't tell the truth to save his life, man. This man could this man couldn't tell the truth. For anything, man. And, he, and then furthermore, he wasn't uh, uh, built to tell the truth. He wasn't built to be righteous, man. This man was built to be uh, an abomination upon the earth, man. Okay? And the dude had also said something about uh, Yahweh Shai was not sent to... Um, <laughs> he said that Yahweh Shai was not sent to, uh, sent, sent, sent to um, help sinners to repent. Let's see what the scripture says, man. This is Mark chapter 2. Straight to the point, Israel. Straight to the point. Verse 17, and it reads this. When Yahweh heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole, they that are whole, have no need of the physician. But they that are sick, I come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. When Yahweh heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole, have no need of the physician, but they that are sick, I I came not to call the righteous, but to sinners, but like it, but sinners to repentance, man. So what what are you talking about, Esau? This is the reason why y'all don't understand the scriptures, man. And we're gonna close out here. This is the this is the this is the reason why y'all do not understand the scriptures, man. Point blank period, man. Alright, this is Psalms 147. Reading verses 19 to 20. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Yasharala. He have not dealt so with any nation. Let me read that again. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakradash. So there you have it, man. There goes your answers, Esau. There goes your answers, man. Okay, so uh, I don't want to rot this out. This was edifying to the hopeful elect. I pray and I hope this, that this was edifying. So with that, I'm just going to say, Shalom.